No, nah, we can start. The garden, as you walk through it, is almost a, a trip through my self-imposed apprenticeship of woodwork. The gate was one of the first projects I did sort of halfway through building the cabin and it's a really nice entryway into the garden um, and then you sort of walk in and you've got this shed on your left and then beyond that there's now a greenhouse. The shed was sort of born out of a book from Ben Law, it's a, a green woodworking book and it tells you all manner of things, sort of how to carve a spoon all the way up to building one of these. I carved one spoon um, and was hooked. I, like, I knew like this was something that had just had me. And I did the spoon and then I knew I was going to build the cabin. That was like a few pages over and I was like, that's it, that's the next thing. And we put it on the ground, planted it back here up in Scotland. And, and uh, yeah, it, it consumed my life for the next two years. So I always wanted it to be like a safe refuge for people that they could just come and hide away from the world in, just make a mess, doing whatever sort of creative endeavour they wanted. Um, obviously for me it was a lot of wood stuff so I could carve a way out there and it didn't matter about having shavings littering the floor and stuff like that. It just seemed, especially during um, Covid, that the world was falling apart and I wanted to cause as little impact as I could while I built it. I wanted the cabin to be either as locally sourced as I could possibly get or recycled. The logs themselves were windblown trees and that were taken from a local forest and then the sawn wood that we used was sourced from the local sawmill up the road. Things like windows and flooring, all of that came just out of sort of second hand places, people that were chucking stuff out, so all these windows are recycled from an old workshop. When I started building, I had about two, three months of skilled labour and work under my belt. And as I built this, it took a fair couple of years. So, yeah, like I had to pick up pretty much everything. I was very fortunate that I was able to be building a cabin down the road with someone else. So I sort of would learn on that job and then apply it back here. And I definitely had a lot of help doing the framing. That's, yeah, I would not have been able to do that alone. Especially as just everything else to my job when you lift up such heavy beams. But that was a really enjoyable part of the job actually. The framing is there's something very satisfying about smashing things with hammers. <laughs> down the road with my good friend Seamus, we decided we'd forge the hinges for the big doors. Well, a lot of hammering and fire involved in metal work and I really, really enjoyed it. Once we fitted them, it really tied up the cabin and gave it a nice little feature. Trying to say what I am most proud of is quite difficult. I'm quite the perfectionist and that made progress slow. By the end of it, just on the ends of the cabin, not including the back and the front, I'd spent 50 hours each on each one. Um, just because I wanted to scribe it in perfectly so that every sort of cladding board would butt up perfectly against the next log. And it does look good and I'm very, very chuffed with that but the most recent job that I just finished was retrofitting um, the diagonal braces on the porch. And that is, that was probably the most technical part. And I'd say the crux of the whole build, just because of the wobbly wood and then the 45 degree angles, everything sort of has to match up. And it was a good day when we fitted those. Um, so I, I think they take the biscuit on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with them. The build definitely took a toll. Thinking and figuring stuff out day in, day out, it was sort of, it just consumed my brain from morning till night. And I'd be doing other jobs on the side or during the day for work. 
and then coming back and being absolutely knackered already and then sort of coming out to the garden and being like, okay, time to do the same thing all over again. And it's a lot. I was wonderfully naive when I decided to take it on. It's, <laughs> it's no easy thing to build a cabin, I've now figured out. The best bit of building the shed was definitely the amount of people I involved. Pretty much anyone that walked into the house or into the garden whilst I was building, which was every weekend and almost every evening that I had spare, they would be dragged along. So, so each, each phase of the build, from the frame to the stud walls, putting on the door, I can think of a different person that helped build it. And uh, that, like the community feel that went into building this is just, yeah, it's really quite something. We then moved on to the greenhouse. That was a really nice build. It was a lot more straightforward, everything's square. We had a basic framework that we were reusing windows that had been taken from the house when they had double glazing put in. We were able to design a frame that we'd then knock up nice and quickly. And again, that was made from local wood milled up the road. Everything sort of ties in quite nicely together. Which do I prefer? I, I think I'd say I preferred building the greenhouse because it was simpler and I didn't have to have any sleepless nights trying to work out how I'd make it work. In terms of building, this, this cabin definitely, definitely wins. <laughs> the cabin is finally at a place that I can put the tools down and be happy that it's done to my satisfaction, which means I can start sort of looking forward into where I'm going to go next with woodworking. And I've decided I want to go more down the furniture making route, which is quite exciting. So I'm about to begin training with a man down in Devon. On the side of that, I couldn't quite leave the cabin building um, forever, so I've got a few projects lined up where I'll be doing a few roundwood buildings um, just to keep my you know, toe in the water. Is that right? It is now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs>